हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू नेसो एकेडमी वी हैव कंप्लीटेड चैप्टर नंबर टू बेसिक्स ऑफ सी प्लस प्लस नाउ वी आर इन दिस चैप्टर चैप्टर नंबर थ्री एंड द नेम ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज ऑपरेटर्स इन सी प्लस प्लस इन दिस चैप्टर वी विल अंडरस्टैंड डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ऑपरेटर्स वी हैव इन सी प्लस प्लस वी आर स्टार्टिंग विद अर्थमैटिक ऑपरेटर्स एंड दिस इज द फर्स्ट लेक्चर ऑफ दिस चैप्टर In this lecture, we will understand arithmetic operators in details. So, without any further delay, let's get started with this lecture and let's see what are the topics. The first topic is introduction to arithmetic operators. First, I will introduce you to arithmetic operators. Then we will move to the next topic, where we will understand unary arithmetic operators. After this, we will understand binary arithmetic operators. and then finally i will give you some important points associated with arithmetic operators so these are all the topics let's start with the first one that is introduction to arithmetic operators so what are arithmetic operators arithmetic operators are used to perform basic mathematical operations so with the help of arithmetic operators we can perform basic mathematical operations such as addition subtraction multiplication division etc also an arithmetic operator mainly works with numeric types like int float and double we know with the help of arithmetic operators we can perform basic mathematical operations now in order to perform basic mathematical operations data must be of numeric type like int float and double i hope this point is also clear to you now i would like to mention that there are two types of arithmetic operators we have unary arithmetic operators and we have binary arithmetic operators now we will discuss these two operators properly but for now we are done with the introduction to arithmetic operators this means we are done with the first topic let's move to the second topic and let's understand unary arithmetic operators properly so what is a unary arithmetic operator unary arithmetic operator is the operator that needs one operand so it can perform operation on one operand or a single value operand represents a value that's why the name unary arithmetic operators here this word unary means one i hope this is clear to you there are two types of unary arithmetic operators we have unary plus and unary minus Now let's understand how to use these operators in C++ programs. For this purpose, we will take a simple example program in C++. Here I have included the IO stream header file because I want to use stdc out in this function. I have defined the main function and in this main function, I have defined this variable val of type int. this means this variable can hold an integer value i have initialized this variable with value minus 4 this is an integer value therefore this statement is valid then after this with the help of stdc out i want to display the result of plus val now here to this variable i have applied this unary plus operator this means i have specified the sign of this variable we know that val is the variable which is holding this value minus 4 so clearly this variable will be replaced by minus 4 at the time of execution now we have plus minus 4 we know that plus will not affect the value we will get minus 4 as the result because plus minus 4 is same as minus 4 in mathematics so clearly in this case we will get minus 4 as the result you can observe this is the unary plus operator because this operator is applied on just one operand i hope this is clear to you 
So we know that after execution of this line, we will get minus 4 on the screen. And after this, because of std and l, we will move to the next line. And in the next line, the result of std c out will be displayed, which is written over here. So here we have this std c out line, and here I have specified minus val. Now we know what happens in this case. We know that at execution time, this variable will be replaced by minus 4. Now we have minus minus 4. We know what is the result of minus minus 4. This minus sign will change the sign of the original value. We will get plus 4. So minus minus 4 is same as plus 4. We will get the result as plus 4. So when we execute this program, we will get the output as minus 4 and 4, where 4 is same as plus 4. I hope this is clear to you. We are getting these outputs in two lines because of std and l. Now I would like to mention that unary plus operator is not that useful in programming because it does not affect anything in the program. So clearly, if we remove this plus sign from here, we will get the same output. So I would recommend not to use unary plus operator. Although you can use unary minus operator based on your needs. So with this, we have understood unary arithmetic operators properly. This means we are done with the second topic also. Now let's move to the third topic where we will understand binary arithmetic operators. So, what is a binary arithmetic operator? Binary arithmetic operator is an operator which can operate on two operands. So, it needs two operands. Here we have the word binary. Binary represents two. I hope this is clear to you. Now, I would like to list down all the binary arithmetic operators we have in C++. Here, I will list down the operations. I will provide for each operation the symbol, example and result. The first operation is addition. Symbol is plus and simple example is 10 plus 3. We will get 13 as the result of this expression. The second operation is subtraction. Symbol is minus. Example is 10 minus 3, we will get 7 in this case. The third operation is multiplication. Symbol is asterisk. We use asterisk for multiplication. Example is 10 times 3, we will get 30 as the result. Then we have the fourth operation, division. Symbol is backslash. Example is 10 divided by 3. We will get 3 in this case. We are getting integer value because the operands are integers. You will get to know about this in a moment. Finally, the fifth operation is modulus. It is represented with the help of percentage symbol. With the help of this symbol, we would be able to divide two numbers and we will get the remainder as the result. For example, if we divide 10 by 3, we will get 1 as the remainder. So, in this case, we will get 1 as the result. I hope this is clear to you. So, these are all the binary arithmetic operators we have in C++ programming language. I hope this is clear. This means we are done with the third topic also. Now, let's move to the fourth topic where we will discuss some important points about arithmetic operators. Here is the first point. Result of division is floating point if either or both the operands are floating point. Always remember this. If one of the operands or both the operands are floating point values, then the result of division will also be a floating point value. For example, in this specific case, I have this expression 12 divided by 5.0. Here we have this floating point value as the operand. Clearly, we will get the result as 2.4. We are getting a floating point value here. If we have 12.0 in place of 12 and 5 in place of 5.0, then also we will get the same result. 
If we have both the operands as floating point, then also we will get the same result that is 2.4. I hope this is completely clear. Now let's move to the second point. Result of division is integer if both the operands are integers. When both the operands are integers, then the result of division is integer. So here in this example, we have these two operands which are integers. In this case, we will get an integer value as the result. I hope this is making sense to you. We are getting 2, not 2.4 because we have two integer operands here. Now here comes the third point. Division by 0 causes runtime error. Remember, if we divide a number by 0, then we will get execution time error. Maybe our program correctly compiles, but at the time of execution, we will get error. For example, if we try to divide 12 by 0, and if we display the result, then of course we will get error. I hope this is clear to you. Now here comes the fourth point. Division by 0, 0.0 gives either INF or NAN. INF represents infinity and NAN represents not a number. We will get either of these two when we divide a number by 0.0. .0. For example, in this case, I am trying to print the result of 12 divided by 0.0. .0. In my case, I got INF as the result. Maybe you will get NAN. This depends on the system. Also, remember that if the system is following IEEE 754 representation for floating point numbers, then only we will get result as INF or NAN. If some other representation is used, then it is possible that we will get error at execution time. This totally depends on this system. Although, I would like to mention that do not divide a number by 0 or 0, 0.0. So, with this, we have covered these important points. And this means we are done with the fourth topic also. And we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this lecture. I will see you in the next one.